Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bianca. If you're new, please click that subscribe button and come and join the family. So 2020 is drawing to a close and it has definitely been a year. Um, there have been a lot of great new releases this year, but with the new year coming, I'm looking forward to seeing what this new year has for us. So this is my most anticipated releases of 2020. I have about 26 books for you today. Um, the majority of them are YA, um, but I'm sure as the year comes and progresses, I will find a bunch of more new releases that I will want to pick up. So the first book I have is The Fate of Crowns by Rebecca L. Garcia, and it's going to be released. It's scheduled to be released January 5th. It is a young adult fantasy. This book is about a woman who is said to inherit the crown after the death of her brother, but her father has other plans for her. So she's thrown into enemy territory and has to fight to get home so she can marry and join her kingdom with the Fae. She has to make the choice between following her duty, supporting her family, or following her heart. This book has Fae mer people and a royal family all things that i find so interesting and i'm kind of looking forward for this to come out the next book i have is you have a match by emma lord this is supposed to be coming out january 5th and it's a young adult contemporary romance i can't even this follows abby as she takes a dna test and finds out that she has an older sister that she didn't know about so she obviously wants to meet up with her sister whose name is savannah and they meet at a summer camp where she's trying to get the answers to the questions she has. Like, why do her parents give up her sister? But she discovers that her parents have a secret that could change her entire life. I mean, lost sister, summer camp, it's a romance. I'm there for it. This next one is part of a series. This is Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. And it is set to come out January 12th and is a YA fantasy. This is a collection of stor short stories that Althea Proserpine wrote. This is the book that is mentioned in the Hazelwood. So these stories include a beautiful and brutal world where a young woman spends the night with death and brides are wed to a mysterious house in the trees. And an enchantress is killed twice and still lives. I mean, I haven't read the hinterland that my <laughs> duh because it hasn't come out yet i haven't read the hazelwood i started the audiobook and i just could not get into it so i wanted to pick up the physical copy i got into it enough where i was really interested but the the audiobook just wasn't for me so i do want the ebook copy or the physical copy it is definitely on my immediate tbr it's on my radar i want to pick it up along with the sequel from the moment i heard about Tales from the Hinterland, I wanted to be able to read those stories, like the main character from the Hazelwood. So this is an exciting release, and I very much look forward to picking it up. The next book on my list is Cast in Firelight by Dana Swift. This is said to be released January 19th, and is a YA fantasy romance. This book gives me serious, I don't know why, because I don't think it's anything like it, but Bone Crier's Moon. I mean, just the the um the cover gives me bone carter's moon vibes um so this follows adar adra adra and i'm ruining it but it follows adra the heir to bellware and jatin the heir of now pure not pure words i just no so these two have been rivals for years, as long as they can remember, but they are also arranged to be married to unite their two kingdoms. However, criminal unrest in Bell War leads the two to adopt secret identities so that they can't recognize each other when they meet again. So um, I'm gonna read this last line so I don't butcher it, but this is what really caught my attention. Now Wickery's fate is in the hands of rivals. Fiance's partners, whatever they are, it's complicated and bound for greatness or destruction. I just, <laughs> that last sentence 
of the synopsis really caught my attention. It just, I mean, enemies to lovers, not friends to lovers, you, I, I want it. The next one I got is not really something I thought I'd be interested in, but when I first read it, I was like, okay, give me some of that. This is Wench by Maxine Kaplan. This is due to be released January 19th. And let me just, let me read this. A funny, fiercely feminist YA epic fantasy following the adventures of a tavern wench. I mean, come on, a tavern wench. That sounds so interesting. So this follows Tanya, who has worked in a tavern since she could see over the bar. And she broke up her first fight when she was 11. Now, as a teenager, she can run the bar and tavern with her eyes closed. But when her guardian dies, everything she has ever known is at risk. So she sets off to get the queen to let her keep the tavern. <laughs> and on her journey, she fights off guards and thieves and apparently an enchanted feather that keeps following her around. I'd read it just to find out what's up with the feather. I mean, what is the feather following her around? Who enchanted the feather? What's up with that? But it just seems like a great adventure story with a really strong female lead, and I'm all here for that. So there is a trigger warning about the use of magic in self-harm, so if that's triggering for you, this might not be the best book, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, the next book I have is Wings of Ebony by J.L. This is a POC main character and is said to be released June 26th and is a YA fantasy. This follows Rue, a black teen, whose mother is shot dead on their doorstep. She's then taken away from her younger sister when her father decides she has to move to, Ugh, I'm gonna kill this, I'm gonna ruin it. Geisen, Geisen, a hidden island that is full of magic wielders. She's the only half god there She's miserable, and she is desperate to see her sister again. So, on the anniversary of her mother's death, she returns to Houston, breaking Geisen's most sacred law that you cannot leave. So she arrives in Houston and discovers that the other black teens in her neighborhood are being driven to crime and violence, and that her sister Tasha is in danger of making the same mistakes that led to their mother's death. Rue has to learn to embrace her ancestors' power so she can save her neighborhood from the same forces that threaten Geisen before it's burned to the ground by the gods. This just sounds so interesting and it really grabbed my attention. The cover is beautiful and I'm so excited. Um, so this has been recommended for readers who like Angie Thomas, Tommy Adiemi, <laughs> wow, Tommy Adiemi and The Hunger Games. So if those books interest you, this might be another one that might interest you too. The next book I have is Unchosen by Catherine Blair and is set to be released January 26th. It's a YA fantasy, a dystopian, it's got zombies, and it's post-apocalyptic. I mean, just zombies. That's all. No, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is was a total cover attraction it's gorgeous. I love the colors. It's got blue. It's got purple. It's got pink. And the face coming out of it just, I want it. <laughs> so this follows Charlotte Holloway, who's having some difficulties. Her childhood crush, Dean, has fallen in love with her sister. And then there's a curse that is called the Crimson that spread through eye contact. I mean, and it turns people into zombies. Eye contact. Zombies. How do you not make eye contact? I mean, I do really well with it, but that's because I have social anxiety and I don't like meeting people's eyes. But other than that, eye contact. So after this outbreak of flesh-eating zombies, Charlotte's kind of left behind. Her eldest sister, Harlow, takes over leading the survivors, and her youngest sister, Vanessa, is the chosen one. Who legend tells is going to save everybody from this curse. Now, when their settlement is attacked, Charlotte does the unthinkable 
and she turns herself in as the chosen one to protect her sister Vanessa. Things kind of take a turn for the worst when Charlotte discovers that Dean is in danger and her lies begin to unravel. So she has to escape her captors, make new allies, and she has to decide for herself what her future actually holds if she wants any chance of saving the man she loves, her sisters, and possibly the world. I can't. I mean, this sounds amazing. And it has swoonworthy sea captains. Swoonworthy sea captains. I read Fable earlier this year and really turned me on to pirates. Pirates. Love them. Gotta love them. I also love that this takes the chosen one trope and kind of turns it on its head. Charlotte was unchosen and yet she's maybe gonna be the one that actually saves the world. So I'm really looking forward to picking up this book. The next I, book I have is Muse by Brittany Cavallaro. This is set to be released February 2nd and it is a YA fantasy historical fiction. This is another book that really has my interest. I haven't yet gotten my hands on Brittany Cavallaro's Charlotte Holmes series, but it's definitely on my radar. I definitely want to pick it up. I've heard great things about it. Um, but this one also seems like a five-star read for me. This book play takes place in, <laughs> this book takes place in 1893, where Claire has never had any control over her life. So she decides to take that control herself. Her father is a famous inventor that is said to reveal his most recent invention, a weapon that is meant to defend their home of St. Cloud from war. But he's always believed that his genius is a gift granted to him by the touch of his daughter, Claire. But when his weapon fails to work, Claire is taken by St. Cloud's young ruler, Governor Remy Duchamp. He also believes that Claire's touch could grant him the favors he needs as he struggles to keep his title from those who wish to unseat him or even kill him. So I'm going to read this. Claire has a choice to make. Will she quietly remake her world from the shadows or bring it down in flames? I mean, bring it down in flames. Really? <laughs> that line last line really caught my attention. And I just, I'm really interested to see what Claire chooses. So I can't wait to pick this up. The next one is by an author that I read, I first read early in October and loved it. So really excited for this one. This is Killjoy by Holly Jackson and it's due to be released February 18th and is a YA mystery. This is a prequel to Holly Jackson's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I loved A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So this is where it all starts. Pippa Fitzimobi is invited to her friend's murder mystery party, but she does not want to go. The party set in the 1920s and it's supposed to take place on an island named Joy. And it's not until the game actually gets started that Pippa realizes how much the intrigue, the deception, and murder mystery intrigues her. And it's this game that leads her to think on another murder that's not so fictional. So this comes before A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I loved that book. I gave it five stars and I'm really looking forward to see where Pippa started out. The next book I have is another YA contemporary romance. I never realized until I made this list how much contemporary romance I picked up. So this is Prepped by Bethany Mangle. This is set to come out February 23rd. It's about preppers. I mean, those people who have decided that any natural disaster they want to be set for. And that really interests me. I, for some weird reason, randomly find myself on YouTube watching prepper videos and then I'm like oh I need to do that and I'm like oh, no never mind <laughs> but really interesting topic so this is about Becca who has grown up in a community of doomsday preppers who are so focused on survival that they've gone so far as to arrange her marriage to the boy next door Roy Kang but that's not the future that Becca sees for herself so she's planning on leaving as soon as she can get a scholarship to college. However, a tragic accident occurs that kind of puts her plans in jeopardy of being ruined. And she discovers that the only one she can turn to is Roy, the boy she dismissed. So when he proposes that they leave together, she has a tough choice to make. 
I mean, this cover really caught my interest. It looks like a Doomsday Preppers guide and I'm really interested to pick up this book. And the next one is another YA contemporary. This is Follow Your Arrow by Jessica Verdi. This comes out March 2nd and is an LGBTQ plus romance. This follows a social media influencer whose relationship with her girlfriend is hashtag relationship goals. So when her girlfriend breaks up with her, Cece's not only heartbroken, but is worried that she'll lose her followers. Things get more complicated when she meets the new boy in town named Josh. He's very much not interested in social media. And while she's developing feelings for him, she wants to keep her internet fame a secret. Things come to a head when her secrets are revealed and she has to confront the connection between public versus private life and discovering what it means to speak her truth. This book really hit a chord with me because recently starting out on booktube, you kind of have to decide what you want to share and what you don't. So that's something I think a lot of social media influencers or influencers in general have to deal with, celebrities have to deal with it. How much do you keep to yourself and how much do you share? So this is an interesting book that I can't wait to pick up. I love that it has LGBTQ plus representation and I very much look forward to picking it up. The next book I have is The Castle School for Troubled Girls by Alyssa B. Scheinmel. This is set to be released March 2nd and it is a YA contemporary mystery thriller. I'm gonna be honest, the troubled girls part caught my attention the most, I think. Um, so this follows Moira Dreyf Dreyfus, who is sent away to an all-girls boarding school after acting out following the death of her best friend. So when she arrives, she refuses to get over the death of a friend and she refuses to befriend any of the other girls at this school. However, when Moira discovers that they're not as isolated as they originally thought and there is a boys version of the castle school, she's sure there's more to them than the doctors are revealing. But the discoveries of the secrets of the school lead Moira to tackle her grief and understand why she was actually sent away by her parents. This gives me such St. Trinian's vibes. It's a school for troubled girls and while it seems to delve a bit more into the mental health and grief of Moira, it still has some intrigue and action in it. St. Trinian's is a British comic series that was turned into a movie series starring Robert Everett and Tallulah Riley. It follows a group of girls that are kind of out of control and have been kicked out of all the normal schools their parents have put them in. So they come to St. Trinian's where their headmistress is also a little out there. Um, these movies are just so much fun. I love them. They're hilarious. There's a lot of comedy in them and they just seem completely ridiculous. But I love these movies and I look very much to seeing how this book works out. The next book I have is The Secret Life of Kitty Granger by G.D. Foxen. This is set to come out March 2nd and is a YA historical fiction. This is about a 16 year old spy. That was all I needed. 16 year old spy. I'm good. That was it. So Kitty Granger has always been viewed as weird. She's sensitive to noise and crowds. She fixates on patterns and she often feels very aware of her surroundings. So while she's always tried to hide these traits, they become a strength for her when her attention is drawn to a suspicious man. She follows him, driven by her need to understand what is so intriguing about him, and discovers the location of a Russian spy ring. She's offered a job with Her Majesty's government, with her first case pitting her against a prominent politician and a closet fascist. Just 16 year old spy. That was all he needed. So I'm like excited for this one. This next one is the third book in a series that I started earlier in October and I very much look forward to reading the next one. This is Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. And this is a middle grade that is set to be released in March 2nd. It, it is a paranormal fantasy with some horror elements, but again, middle grade, not that scary for adults, I don't think. So this is the third book in the Cassidy Blake series. Cass can speak to ghosts, and her best friend Jake is a ghost. So as the summer starts, Cass's parents get a TV deal where they go and hunt ghosts. They go to the, some of the world's spookiest locations to learn about their 
supernatural history. So in the first book, it was Edinburgh. In the second book, it was Paris. And in this third book, they're in New Orleans. While in New Orleans, she uncovers her most dangerous challenge yet, where she has to confront a servant of death itself. So this sounds awesome. I'm very much looking forward to it. Cannot wait. The next book is another one I a sequel to a book I read this year. This is the final book in the Fable duology. This is Namesake by Adrian Young, and this is set to come out March 16th. This is a YA fantasy adventure, and it has pirates. This was the book that really got me interested in reading books about pirates. So the series follows Fable, whose father leaves her on an island following the death of her mother. A few years later, she finally has the funds to leave the island and try to find her father. When leaving her on this island, her father promises her that she will, if she can find him, she will receive everything that belongs to her. But it turns out that what she thinks belongs to her is not exactly what her father had in mind. So this is the second book in the duology. It is the final book and I can't even. This cover is just as gorgeous as the cover for Fable and I can't wait until it comes out. This next book is this another sequel and this is Bone Cars Dawn by Catherine Purdy. This is part of the Bone Grace series, so this is number two, and is set to come out March 30th. It is a YA fantasy, I believe, and is a story of love, sisterhood, and determination as three friends find the courage and power to shatter the boundary between the living and the dead. I mean, I've not read the Bone Cryer's Moon yet. It is definitely on my TBR. I have a gorgeous edition from Owl Crate and I very much look forward to having a gorgeous edition of Bone Cryer's Dawn from Owl Crate. So hopefully they release one when the book comes out. Um, so this is on my TBR. Very much look forward to this coming out next year. The next one I have is another YA contemporary romance. This is Hate and Waiting by Becky Albertalli. This is set to come out April 20th and it follows best friends Kate and Anderson, or Andy, who are known by everyone to do everything together. They have even shared crushes, but that kind of ends when their mutual long distance crush ends up coming to their school. So unfortunately, both girls really like the talented and sweet Matt Olson, and it may be causing some strain in their friendship. This, I mean, the tagline on the cover is, break a leg, not your heart. Just, I mean, it's it sounds cute, and I really want to pick it up next year when it comes out. Um, this next one is another book by Holly Jackson. This is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is Good Girl, Bad Blood, and it's set to come out April 30th and is a YA mystery thriller. This follows Pip after she solved her first case about Sal Singh and Andy Bell. She has since released a podcast that has gone viral but has decided she's done being a detective she doesn't want to solve any more mysteries that is until someone she knows goes missing and the police aren't doing anything about it so the question is will she find him before it's too late i loved a good girl's guide to murder it was very much my first ya mystery thriller and it really had my attention from the start and i really can't wait to pick up this sequel to it and see what pip is up to next this next one is a historical fiction. It is a young adult. I just, I'm, I can't even, I wanted to be May already. This is Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee, set to come out May 4th. I read Twin British Chinese Acrobats and Titanic, and I was done. That was it for me. I have loved the story of the Titanic ever since I was a kid, and I first watched the movie with my sister. I've learned as much as I could about it ever since, watching the historical documentaries or reading the books anything I could get my hands on about the Titanic and I had it. But this book follows the Luck Twins, Jamie and Valora, who've been estranged for two years. Valora talks her way into first class while her brother is in third class with Chinese laborers. She's just quit her job at the circus and wants to reunite with the only remaining family she has, her brother. And she wants to get jobs for the both of them with Ringling Brothers Circus. The only problem is she has no idea if this is the future that her brother wants. But everything comes to head on that faithful moonless night when the, and I'm quoting this part, the supposedly unsinkable ship 
is dealt a fatal blow. This book is said to be loosely based off of newly found evidence that there were six Titanic survivors of Chinese descent. This book is right up my alley with the history of the Titanic. I think this will definitely be a five-star read and I'm really looking forward to it. I also love the cover. It is gorgeous. I love the illustration and it's so beautiful. So the next book I have for you is Better Together by Christine Riccio. This is set to be released June 1st and is a YA contemporary romance with some family situations, I guess. Um, I read the tagline that said this was a cross between Freaky Friday and The Parent Trap about sisters, second chances, finding romance and yourself, and that was it. I was hooked. This follows Jamie, who's trying to be a stand-up comedian in LA, but has unfortunately recently developed a case of stage anxiety. While well, Siri is a ballerina living in New Jersey who has a career ending injury. The sisters were separated at a young age and they meet again, I believe it's a decade later, at a rediscover yourself retreat in Colorado. Separated by divorce, Jamie went with their dad and Siri went with their mom. Now they choose to switch places so they can get to know and confront the parent that didn't take them. Apparently there's some magic that happens to make Siri look like Jamie and Jamie look like Siri. But things become complicated when Siri finds herself falling for Jamie's best friend, Dawn, and Jamie finds herself falling for Zara, Zara, names, a handsome New Yorker that she just keeps running into. Um, this story seems so interesting and fun and being able to see the parent trap esque story with older characters seems so interesting. I used to love that movie as a child and I'm really interested to see how they take this one now that they're older and seeing how these sisters navigate everything going on in each other's lives as they live the other sister's life. So very interested in this book, seems really interesting. The next one I have is To Serve With Love by Lauren Lane. This is set to be released in June on the 29th and is an, an adult contemporary romantic comedy. I believe this is the only adult book I have on this list right now, but this follows Gracie, who has just lost her father five months after he was diagnosed with lung cancer. Instead of following her passion for art, she decides she's gonna take on his champagne shop. She discovers that the business isn't doing that well, and to make things worse, she has an irritating but handsome Sebastian who is trying to buy her out so his company can build a parking garage. So while she struggles with the business and she refuses to admit that maybe she didn't make the right choice in choosing to take on the shop, she chooses to unload her stress and her doubts and seek advice from an unknown man that she's been talking to over a blind dating app. She only knows him as Sir. This is an app where they get to talk and get to know each other before learning names and exchanging pictures. And she finds herself falling for him. This title caught my attention because I love the song To Sir With Love, um, but the tagline is what kept my attention. Let me read you this. Love is blind meets you've got mail in this laugh out loud romantic comedy following two 30 somethings who meet on a blind dating app only to realize that their online chemistry is nothing compared to their offline rivalry. I can't wait. I really can. This next one is the third and final book in a trilogy. This is Any Way the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. It's said to be released January 6th and is a YA queer fantasy romance. Let me just read this. I'm gonna read this. Carry On was conceived as a book about chosen one stories. Any Way the Wind Blows is an ending about endings, about catharsis and closure, and how we choose to move on from the traumas and triumphs that try to define us. If I didn't have any interest in reading Carry On before reading that tagline, I definitely would have picked it up afterwards. I have Carry On on my bookshelf right now. I have Wayward Son also on my bookshelf right now. They are definitely on my TBR for the beginning of next year. And like I said, all I had to do was read that tagline in the synopsis and I knew I had to read the series and I definitely am looking forward to picking that up come January. The next book I have is XOXO by, ooh, I'm gonna kill this, Axie O. I'm really sorry if I ruined that. Um, This is set to be released July 13th. It is a YA contemporary romance. This follows a cello prodigy named Jenny whose only goal is to get into a prestigious music conservatory. But when she meets Jay Wu one day in her uncle's LA 
karaoke bar. She lets him pull her out of her comfort zone and she has an amazing and unforgettable adventure filled night before he just disappears. She doesn't see him again for three months when she and her mother arrive in South Korea to take care of her grandmother who is failing in health. She runs into Jaewoo again at an elite arts academy where she has just registered for the semester. It's then that she discovers he's a student, but he is also a member of one of the biggest K-pop bands in the world and he's forbidden to date. So Jenny has to decide whether she's willing to throw away the path she's been working towards her entire life for love. He's a cake pop star. He's not allowed to date, but they fall in love. I think it's cute. I can't wait to pick it up. I'm just, I'm so excited. Just So the next one is a, another third book in a series, and it is also the final book. This is Wings and Shadows by Nikki Palpretta. It's said to be released July 13th. It's a YA fantasy adventure romance, and I just, this cover. Oh, this cover. I love this cover. I want this cover. I haven't yet read this series, but I definitely want to. This is the final book and I've heard amazing things about it and I really can't wait to pick up the first one. This is about Phoenix Riders and sisters who kind of become enemies by the end of it, I believe, and I really kind of want to see how their relationship ends up. I'm really interested to see that dynamic, so definitely going to be picking up the first two books can't wait for this third one to come out and to read the end. Oh, this series. I love this series. Let me tell you. Isn't it romantic by Lissa K. Adams? <laughs> this one is set to release July 28th. It is an adult contemporary romance. I want this book now. This follows my favorite character from the romance book club series, Vlad. He's the Russian hockey player and he's so funny and I love him to death. Um, so his love for romance novels finally causes him to pick up a pen and try to write his own. While his wife, Elena Konnikova, his childhood best friend, who he married in a marriage of convenience to save her life. After her father, a reporter disappears after speaking out against Russian governmental corruption. But Vlad's no longer satisfied with a marriage of convenience and he joined the Bromance Book Club to learn how to make his wife fall in love with him because he now knows he deserves more. This book sounds so amazing with not only the Bromance Book Club helping Vlad but also his senior citizen neighbors and a group of widowers called the Loners I just, I want it. So things are progressing great with Elena when her past comes back to haunt her and the group faces their first life and death grand gesture. I just, I love this series and now we have suspense and we have action and I want it and I literally can't wait and I love it. <laughs> The final book I have is Gods and Monsters by Shelby Maharin. This is set to be released August 3rd and is the third book. Is it the final book? I don't think so. It's the third book in the Serpent and Dove series. I don't know that it's the final book. This book does not have a synopsis yet. Um, it doesn't even have a cover, but I loved Serpent and Dove. I'm planning to pick up Blood and Honey in January and now we have Gods and Monsters. So those are just a few of my most anticipated books to pick up in 2021. Can't wait for some of them. I can't wait for all of them. Some of them are just, I want them in my hands now. But I'll leave the links to these books down below so you can check them out for yourself. See if you want to pick them up too. Please let me know in the comments any books that are on your most anticipated list. I would love to hear from you. Um, so I'll talk with you guys later. Bye.